Cool. Hi, MicroCamp, March 2022. We are here uh, for the State of Microdoplog session. And uh, that there are two people here with me. I'm Jean. If you don't know me from Microdoplog, uh, I'm the community manager. And I'm sorry I haven't met you yet. So definitely uh, send me a shout out on the timeline. But I am here with Manton Reese, Hello. who is the founder of Microdoplog. And Vincent Ritter, who is our, our, our ace coder for many projects now and has been a great member of the Microdot blog community um, for a long time now and w w has been is now you know one of our one of our co-workers, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And um, I thought I would say, first off, we have um, a, if you're on the veto hub, which you I assume you are because that's how you're watching this. <laughs> there is a discussion channel and I'm going to be monitoring that for uh, questions for Manton, Vincent or myself. Um, we're, uh, I'm going to start it off uh, with Manton just to uh, say state of, the, of micro dot blog. What's changed since we spoke about this last at last micro camp in uh, 2021? And oh, wow. oh, let me just say, people, throw your questions into the discussion, and I'll make sure to pose them if uh, we have enough time. This is going to be about a half an hour uh, session, so uh, feel free to put your questions in. I should have made a list of what's changed. I didn't know you were going to ask me that, but I should have. <laughs> I should have. Been I didn't know I was going to ask you that prepared either. for that question. A lot has changed. Every time I look back, um, you know, we're five years in now, and every year I feel like. I wouldn't want to use microdoblog a year ago. You know, it, it, it really, I really feel like it improves, you know, every year, uh, every month, in some cases, you know, we're rolling out improvements and yeah, that's the nature of software. You always want to be on the, <laughs> the latest version, but we have done a few big things. Um, we have, you know, we've launched some new features uh, like for microdoblog premium, like the bookmarks and the archiving and the new email newsletters. Um, it's been fun to see people experiment with those. And then lots of little tweaks, lots of improvements to the performance of publishing um, so in the past. And even now still, sometimes when you post, it's not quite fast enough to show up in the timeline. We're always making improvements to that. I'm, I'm really happy with the progress that we've made on that. Plugins and themes, I think that is a huge thing that we've rolled out and I'm so excited. I mean, uh, always from the very beginning, you know, we had a few themes. And I always imagined that we'd have a lot more than I could possibly create myself. And now we do, we have uh, more themes showing up from people in the community that have either created a new theme from scratch or uh, ported a theme from another blogging platform. And some of them are beautiful. I'm, I'm so excited to see that kind of stuff. And we're gonna be talking about that later today. Actually, yeah, in the, no, that's at, been a big, camp. big explosion. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't even had a chance to look at all of the new themes. I just saw End on End, whose actual name I can't think of offhand right now, just released one this week. But yeah, there's been really cool. su such a uh, an uh, outpouring of excitement and activity in that area. And it's definitely been an area where I know in the beginning with Microdot Blog, I just landed on one theme and I just said, I'm going to just stick with this because I don't want to distract myself um, from just blogging. And I know eventually I can change it because it's a blog. I can change the theme. Um, and now, you know, but I always felt like, well, you know, like your blog, Manson, looks like my blog. <laughs> we've been using the same yeah. one. I, I, I just recently tweet started tweaking mine a little bit. So mine now looks oh, a little you? bit different. Yeah, I, I've. Okay. Uh, it's based on one of the built-in themes, but I've, I've made some changes and moved stuff around. So slowly making it my own, you know, because the personalization, yeah. that's a big deal. People want their own yeah. site to, to be theirs. Yes. And uh, of course, we have a, quite a community of people who like to, um, as I say, you know, twiddle around or tinker with their, um, with their blogs and their settings and their setups. And so... So it's sort of coming together now that these that we, we're we're gonna see a lot more variation in micro blog blogs, post-it blogs, you know, and uh, 
but you're still totally cool to use some theme right out of the box and just concentrate on writing, um, which is what uh, our first priority is that you write, not tinker with your, <laughs> with your book. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, to bring Vincent into the conversation, I thought I would um, talk about something else that's brand new in Microdot blog that we can announce today and take it, Manton. <laughs> Well, I will let Vincent go with most of it, but I will. The headline is the Android version, the official Android version of Micro.blog is out. We did the public beta for the last month or so, and it is officially live, approved by Google. It's in the Play Store. And so that is a huge milestone that like a year ago, I, I wouldn't have said that we'd have it, we'd have it out by now. I'd, I'd say sometime in the future, but it's out. So <laughs> congratulations. Vincent, um, he did the development on it, and I'm just really happy to finally support that other platform. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's uh, pretty good, really happy. Uh, you know, it took a few months to get right, and we have a good base that we can build upon now as well. And, you know, through the beta and everything, I mean, even internal testing, it's been really good just to discover. Uh, I was also had to work together on an app like this. So yeah, really happy to get the get it out to you know people now on Android. So yeah, and 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 just to back up a little bit for folks who don't know you, Vincent, why don't you tell them what you've you've um, you've been doing on Microdot Blog and and what where you know whatever you'd like to share. <laughs> so yeah, I came to Microdot Blog a few years ago, um, just after Kickstarter the the kind of public registration started. I didn't back kickstart at the time um, because of personal reasons. And then I kind of emailed Manson early on saying, I really like the service. And is there anything I can do to help uh, with anything really? And then I kind of got this idea to build an app uh, for Microblog, which turned out to be glue on. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been uh, working on that for, for a few years now. Um, I think it's, quite popular <laughs> yeah. amongst the crowd. So it's got with a fan base. I, you know, get a lot of feedback from it. And I'm really happy to, you know, take what I learned from there and now apply it to Microblog. And for me, that's great because I support the community like I want to. Um, it's a great community. You know, I don't want to be anywhere else really. And, you know, bringing all this and to, to Manton is, you know, dream come true in a way. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's well, it's a dream come true, as Manton said. It's been on our list since uh, the since the beginning, and of course, it, uh, it's just it's great to have uh, have something to offer to our friends in the community that are uh, are using Android uh, Android devices because that's that's certainly um, they've certainly been patient with us and our <laughs> Apple focus. So. Android people, thank you very much for waiting. I hope it, you enjoy your new app. Yeah. Um, and uh, in the process of the two of you working on a Google Play Store app and also on updating other apps, I think Manton, you, um, you came to some realizations about where you see the future of Microdot blog development um, and where how our apps will be distributed in the future, and maybe you can uh, let folks know a little bit about um, about you know your thinking on that because that's an important piece for the community to mm -hmm. to hear about. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, one thing that I thought about this a lot as Vincent was starting to work on the Android version, and also as you know, we have other apps that we've been tinkering with. Uh, going back, you know, Jonathan Hayes and I worked on Sunlit, uh, which is a photo blogging kind of app. It's Microdot blog, but like if the UI was kind of like Instagram uh, and then Wavelength for podcasts. And then lately I did this app epilogue for books. These are a lot of apps and, you know, you're looking at the Zoom screen. There's only three people plus John. He's not, <laughs> it's not here right now. Um, <laughs> you know, and we can't be stretched too thin. And so we need to consolidate and, and, and think about how we're developing apps so that we can actually deliver, deliver them to 
everybody on as many platforms as possible um, without just rewriting everything for each platform. So we're because Vincent had, had done uh, used React Native, we don't want to get too technical on this, but because he had used this framework React Native for Gluon, um, that, uh, and also for the Android app, it started to make more and more sense for us to, to do more of that. And so the new version of Epilog is based on the same framework um, and it's open source too. And there's actually some, been some contribu um, contributors, uh, someone contributing some code just this week, actually on the Android version, some improvements um, to Epilog, our books app. And I think this is gonna really help us not be too scattered in our approach so that we can make the best apps we can um, and of course, the web version of micro.blog for many people, I mean, that's still like the primary, that's still, that's where the API is. That's where all the features are. You know, the, the native apps don't necessarily have every feature. They're the convenient way when you're on mobile to access micro.blog and post. And, and also the, the funny thing to rewind a little bit, when we started working with Vincent, I mean, the idea wasn't for him to do the Android version. That, that was not like the thing I started talking to him about it first was to help with the web version and uh his first project i think was like the dark mode version on the web you know going through the whole web version of micro.blog and making sure it looks good in dark mode and or looks at all I mean, there wasn't a dark mode version <laughs> before he came on and other improvements like that on the back end that you know he and i have been able to brainstorm and talk about so that the being able to do the best we can on the web version and then have a framework that we can use more and more on the native apps so that a small team, which is us, can actually deliver something that we're proud of to as many platforms as possible. Yeah. I think that um, it's kind of interesting and exciting, you know, to, to think in a different way. And, and especially like, because, Certainly when I came to micro.blog, one of the things that I was interested in is working on a project that wasn't strictly Apple dominated, you know, because I've been doing that for a long time and that it would be interesting to get out and um, have something that like, especially that was, was ultimately web-based. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. so that's been cool. And well, I mean, that, that's, that's the whole thing. We're all about the open web and, you yeah. know, like <laughs> people being able to publish at their own domain name, um, being able to have apps and like a really developer friendly community so that people can build different experiences. Like I, I'm in so happy with, you know, we talked about Gluon, but there's other third party apps, Icro. Um, there's apps just for uploading photos, uh, Mimi Uploader Mimi for Uploader, iOS. Yeah. Um, and then also Ulysses, iWriter. These are big apps that have huge um, you know, user bases and you can just publish right to micro.blog from them because of the APIs we support and that we're willing to work with any app. Um, so that, yeah, that's a huge part. That will always be a huge part. And you know, the, the background on the, the native app frameworks is a lot of it is, you know, and I, I know Vincent shares some of this is just the frustration with dealing with companies like Apple and Google that really can control <laughs> your business. They can control what your users see. Um, and so, you know, the more we can kind of free ourselves from that a little bit to, uh, to build the best thing that is right for our users and the micro.blog community, you know, the better off we'll be. And I think the better off the web will be too. The, the nice thing about the apps is we use uh, native frameworks and then on top or within we have the web views as well to, you know, show your timeline and everything and other parts of the app. So it's a nice mix. So we get to work on the whole kind of stack anyway. Yep. So we make improvements on the web at the same time we have something for the native apps. So it really works really well together. That's how I found it anyway. So mm -hmm. it, it's really a good benefit, especially for a small team. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> being able to share like the, like the kind of like the default timeline view, being able to like mm -hmm. repurpose some of that across multiple platforms is really nice. And still, and you know, if someone wants to build an app that the timeline looks completely different, you know, go for it. You know, like I think the more apps, the better we, we, we don't, we don't need everybody to use the same app. We're not Twitter and Facebook where you have to yeah. use their app because they need the eyeballs and the advertising. Like, we, we, we appreciate a lot of diverse set of experiences. 
Oh yeah, I know that's. Um... I'm not. Gonna, we're not going to talk about <laughs> no. Twitter today. <laughs> you you don't even get me started. Sorry. If uh, if uh, anybody, <laughs> I did make a snarky remark on Twitter about uh. Twitter yesterday on Twitter, and uh, I, you know, I was like, "Don't get me sucked into this." I could feel it, you know. But I don't have that problem on uh, Microdot Blog, and definitely not. Like just lately, I've had to do some things on, on other kinds of platforms like Instagram and also setting up something on WordPress. And I realized now I, after five years, and it's my fifth anniversary of my first blog post on Microdoplog, I am completely spoiled. <laughs> I don't want any, <laughs> I don't want any platform suggesting how I should do something like and go on like, hey, SEO this or, you know, follow this or do this. It's like, you guys shut up. <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely, <laughs> you're stuck with me because that can really not go anywhere else. <laughs> um, but uh we are getting some questions from the from the chat, and I wanted to pose a, a couple to you. And I think somebody brought this up. Jason asked this too, but Khaled said, "Any chance of a Windows uh, app for Microdoplog?" <laughs> Mitten's eyebrows just go like. <laughs> yeah, we hear that sometimes. Oh, there's a chance. Um, I would be. On, I'll be honest. I think it it will have to be low priority because we don't use Windows, um, or I don't. Yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, with Windows, we can create a uh, optimized uh, web app uh, more That's because true. Windows natively supports progressive web apps as such, and it gives you much better support. It allows you to install it, so that's something we could look at potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good. Yeah, that's probably the best next step is to make the web version on Windows and all platforms, but you know, on Windows especially where there is no native app absolutely the best it can be. And then the step after that would be to um, think about taking, you know, our, our shared native React Native code base and moving it to Windows. So like technically, is def we, can, we can definitely do it. It's just a matter of where that sits in the priorities. I know that's not a great answer for people who love Windows. Um, but <laughs> so, you know, it's something we think about. And, and the more I, I think, a lot of what we do, the priorities are shaped by what we hear over and over again. So like if we yeah. increasingly hear, and we may like with Android, the Android version, uh, attracting more uh, people outside the Apple ecosystem, we may hear that feedback that we need a Windows version more and more. And so then, you know, that's something we can prioritize. With the Android version, we are going to open source it. Yeah. Um, so people can have a look at the code. Um, eventually we'll also work on the iOS version for that, but, you know, you can take that code, look how we kind of do it, or, you know, um, I mean, some of it is opinionated, <laughs> um, but you can just take that, copy it if you want, fork it, um, and create your own app from that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We do want to open source it and all the native apps are open source except Android <laughs> right now. Um, and, but of course, the iOS and the Mac version are not much help to port to Windows. Um, yeah, that would be too. Uh, they're not much help, but the code <laughs> is just, there. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, there's a question here from Jatan, uh, also known as Uncertain Quark, and the Moon Guy, as I think of him. Mm. Any plans to make the web version better? Things like keyboard shortcuts for formatting and linking text, and also a WYSIWYG version, maybe. So. Yes, the, I mean, that <laughs> kind of go well. Uh, not yes to all of that necessarily, <laughs> but, yeah, but yes, I'm the web version should be better. Yeah, and that's kind of <laughs> that follows really with what we were just saying. I think the web version should be better. Key, better uh, keyboard shortcuts is great. I don't know why we haven't done that yet, to be honest, because I have heard that feedback for people who are, are living more in the web version, uh, the keyboard shortcuts should be, you know, just like the Mac version, you know, has keyboard shortcuts for markdown, you know, links and uh, bold and things like that. And the web version should also support that. There's no technical reason why we, we can't do that. Um, for WYSIWYG, um, I don't know. I, to be honest, like, and I, and I know some people are looking for more of a, something that's a little closer to like a medium.com 
experience or like a WordPress, like the new, not necessarily like the new WordPress block editor, but something like a little more like uh, WordPress's WYSIWYG. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like the simplicity of the kind of markdown roots that micro.blog has. Um, and I, I think my focus would be on making the markdown support, the preview, the syntax highlighting, keyboard shortcuts, other things like that better before we had a different, more WYSIWYG view. That's just my gut feeling. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know, Vincent, feel to jump for to jump into if you have any thoughts on the web version and making the writing experience better. Yeah, I mean, I've been using the web version uh, quite a lot on my mobile devices just to test it out. Um, you know, there's definitely improvements we want to make there uh, that we talked about already. Um, I think with WYSIWYG, it is nice for new users that don't know Markdown. Um, but I think having some sort of hybrid between Markdown and WYSIWYG, I think will be maybe something we could look at potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and make that kind of initial experience a little bit easier just to give them shortcuts, like keyboard shortcuts. We can have shortcuts for changing text or something, um, but we keep the markdown itself that you see. So I think yeah. markdown is great. Um, I think just some people, there's a bit of a learning curve and they might be put off by that. Yeah, I, I think there's, I, I agree with you. There's a lot we could do. I think there's a lot we could do in the current kind of model of how we think about it. Um, and then if that's not enough, you know, we can go further. I think a little bit about, so two, two other thoughts I want to say uh, about this. The one thing I hear is for longer blog posts, not short micro blog posts, but for longer blog posts that have multiple photos, for example, the web version is kind of a pain um, to do that with. Um, so you like if you wanted to have like sometimes all like if I go on a trip I'm traveling right now if I if I want to do a big blog blog post when I get back that has some texts and photos and text and photos like our app Sunlit was designed for that like it's great for that if you have an iPhone because um, you can add text and photos and you can drag the photos around and it's perfect and so having that kind of experience on the web we could have something specialized like that. We could also make it just easier to manage and upload multiple photos on the web. You can do it, but basically you go to the upload section, you upload like five photos, and then you kind of copy and paste, you know, the link in to, um, to your blog post. So there's stuff we could do that way. And also I think we could maybe draw some inspiration from an app like Ulysses, which I kind of think of Ulysses as a markdown editor, but it's not really, it's not actually markdown. It's their own kind of flavor um, which gives them the ability to uh, have an easier kind of UI for managing, you know, embedded photos um, style. It, it goes one step further than Markdown. The downside to that uh, is the nice thing about Markdown is you can just put HTML in it if you need to, and it works. Of course, not everyone knows HTML, but it's really <laughs> useful to be able to have like uh, image reference in HTML or a video or block quote, or yeah, just diff more, more advanced styling. You know, there's things you can do in HTML that are really useful. And that's a case of where the Ulysses experience, you can't do that. You can't just put HTML in it because it's this kind of special uh, experience with uh, Markdown. So it, it's great to think about, you know, we should absolutely have a goal to make the web version um, uh, the, for composing longer blog posts, especially better. Another nice thing ab about our approach now with the apps going forward is we have a hybrid framework where we kind of build it in JavaScript anyway. So whatever we do on the web, we can also bring to the apps or whatever we have in the apps, we can bring to the web version as well. So we have this kind of connection going between them, you know, it should speed up uh, things there as well. Yeah. Cool. Um, we've got a, I know we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes, but uh, there's a couple of good questions. Of course, I'm just asking you the questions that features that I personally want, but <laughs> say people are voting for what I want, like critique says, I, um, he says, how about, where is this? Uh, it, um, he's mentioned it before, no pun intended timeline without mentions in it like could we read the timeline without reading everybody's replies is that 
doable. Also, Pratik mentioned here in the chat, he says, I've never heard Manton say no. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? Oh, yeah. I know that's not I'm, true. I, there are certain things you've yeah. said no to, but features you've never said like absolutely not. So. Yeah. I mean, it's hard because we can't do everything. Um, right. And we do, I, I, I think there is a core kind of premise in how micro.blog works that will always be there. Um, but we can, you know, there's room in there between yes and no to, <laughs> to make things better. Um, <laughs> The uh, yeah, so the uh, I've already I'm sorry, I've already forgotten what was timeline. The, timeline, timeline, yes, we can do that. Yeah, we yeah, I've, I've heard that we we can do that. So, in right now, in micro.blog in on the web version, and which will control all the apps, also, um, there's a setting for show everything or show um, only show replies to people to you or people that follow you, and so. This, for people that were on Twitter back in the old days, this is a change they made without a preference. So uh, it used to be that you would see replies in the timeline, no matter who they were mentioning. And then they switched that to only show if you were following um, that person. And so that's a toggle in Microdot blog. We like the default because it's a great way to discover the conversations and users. You know, um, if you're if you can see replies from other people that you didn't know were on microdot blog yet um, that are mentioning someone else, you can click through, see the conversation, and say, "Oh, I want to follow that person. They're posting something interesting." So I like that default, but there is that other setting. And then what you're talking about is a kind of like a third setting, which is don't show me mentions at all in the timeline. Mm -hmm. I just want to see the the blog posts, and that's it. And so that would be even a simpler, even you know less cluttered especially if you don't have time to catch up on anything. So I don't see why we couldn't add that. Doesn't seem okay. to be a problem. <laughs> well, we have all heard that now on yeah. video and it's being recorded as the Zoom <laughs> lady told us. So. <laughs> yes, I would like that. I actually would, I won't really be able to take advantage of that because <laughs> I, you know, I'm reading the replies um, for information, you know, about what's happening in the community, but you know, there are some times where I would just like to see what people are doing mm -hmm. as an, uh, a micro dot blog civilian and just like, you know, because it's I'm never going back to Twitter for my social. So uh, I like to I do like to get to know people and see what they're up to without maybe seeing because sometimes, you know, we do get into threads that are that go for a long time and you, yeah. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> and there's improvements. Yeah, we could like I've also heard that feedback about like uh, when sometimes conversations in Microsoft go really, you know, it's amazing, you know. But you know, I'm glad we have this problem of like a thread <laughs> being 50 messages long. Um, but it would be nice to have better ways to um, view those. Um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's not the default, but maybe there's a way to click in that shows the actual hierarchy of who's replying to who, because we do store all that. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that would, that would help me a lot. Um, too. Yeah. So, and, uh, anyway, all right. So, um, we didn't want to go on for too long, too long, because we have another session coming up at 11 o'clock, um, uh, Sher Sherry or Cherie, I only realized today, I don't really know how to pronounce uh, one of our most, uh, you know, popular members of the community. Uh, she's going to be talking about um, self-publishing a novel, and uh, she will, I'm sure, uh, let us know how to pronounce her name. However, um, before we, uh, before I get, give up my, my platform here, um, I am going in the chat. I'm in a minute. As soon as we finish and close off on this, I'm going to put a link. Um, so on today's schedule, we have, so we have Sh Sherry, Sherry at 11 and then, uh, oh, like Sherry. So Sher Sherry, yay. Hi, Sherry. Thank you. She, uh, Sherry says, um, uh, Sherry is at 11, and then at 12 o'clock, we have the Microdot Blog Town Hall, which our uh, pal Jason Burke will be moderating, and we will be putting out a few uh, discussion topics in advance. Uh, so um, people who want to be on that Zoom and uh, talk uh, with other people uh, about 
um, you know, what they like or what they like to improve about microdot blog. Some of the questions that we didn't get to this morning from the audience, you can come and um, ask them there. Um, if you don't have to have your your video on to be in the Zoom, so if you, if that is a reason you don't want to join us, or if you just want to watch uh, other people that you know from Microdot Blog Zoom, that's to me the most interesting thing is to see the faces and hear the voices. But um, we're looking forward to running that town hall at noon Pacific, and then um, the other thing that we have on the schedule um, right now, there are three, uh, three um, presentations or one panel and two presentations that come um, evening time for us in Portland, uh, starting at 7 p.m. Portland time. Um, we will have um, some, um, we have uh, Halstead and we have, um, I should have the schedule in front of me, but you all do. Um, <laughs> we have, uh, we're having a panel on themes and plugins with some of the theme and plugin writers. So that's gonna be a good opportunity to hear what they're doing. And, and if they can take questions, I will be um, piping those in to Pete Moore, who will be moderating that. And then the last closing up, our, our, our what do we call them, our closer, for this evening is Martin Feld, who has a very intriguing uh, t title for his presentation and uh, I'm looking forward to that. But in between our evening, as I'm calling them, and morning presentations, we did uh, lay out some time for meetups. And the way we're gonna do the meetups this time is unconference style. So we'll take um, proposals from anybody who wants to propose a meetup and I'll put a link in the into the chat in a, in a second here. Um, and or if you have questions, um, we can talk about them in the chat, or you can email me at gene at micro.blog. And we will work on putting together any uh, promising meetups that uh, people want to do today. So if you're available and want to moderate a meetup, or if you're available and just want to come to one, we'll we'll. If we have enough interest, we'll do uh, a couple of them sometime in that time slot and try to make them work. But as you know, we're a global community. So I, I have learned the earth is a sphere and there's absolutely no one time slot that works for everybody. Oh, well. Um, thank you so much for coming to the opening session of Micro. I'm sorry, MicroCamp, uh, March 2022. Manton and Vincent, thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, we'll see y'all in the in the hub for chats and we'll see Sherry coming up in uh, just about 25 minutes. And Bye, one thing okay. oh. I was going to no, I was go just going to say one change if you were here last year we did we did the sessions broadcast live like we're broadcasting this one. The this year the some of the ones that aren't live they're pre-recorded they won't be broadcast live, they'll be available to watch. And so you might need to click around in Vita to make sure that you uh, find those, but just wanted to mention that in case uh, oh, okay. you know, it's not, well, it's we'll, not clear. We'll try yeah. to guide you from, yeah. from the chat. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'm not even sure what to do, but <laughs> hey, welcome to we'll Microdot We'll figure it out, blog. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're at right. Microdot.blog because you want to try something new. Right. Right. <laughs> we, we are happy to oblige with uh, trying things new all the time. Thanks, Take everyone. care, y'all. Thanks, Manton. Thanks, Vincent. Thank